Well, Yanko, these, these are the engines that we've been talking about. Uh, I'm almost speechless on how spectacular these two locomotives look in this case. Uh, I think you could easily say that this is one of the most finest, if not the finest, reproduction of American steam engines in a, in a G-scale that has ever been made. And you, uh, it's, these just totally, they're just so brilliant underneath this case and uh, just the crafts, craftsmanship and the details. Can you uh, tell us some more about this? this? This is just a work of art. Yeah, we, we thought about how can we um, give the, the 150 years anniversary the, the best respect uh, from our side as LGB um, with, a, with a model. And um, let's say around now, it's two years, three years ago, where we started thinking about that whole anniversary and that whole event, which will happen in, in Ogden and Promontory about 150 years anniversary. And at first we thought about a plastic model, we thought about some HO models, we thought about a lot of things for LGB, HO was out of the order. Um, and doing some LGB locomotives was uh, at the first beginning of the thinking and it's still kept on that position. But um, it was always a question which quality these locomotives should have. And uh, we had the option to do a plastic model, uh, um, but looking through the American market, there are already 440 models existing. Um, I turned a little bit into a specialist of these two ladies here. I'm not 100% a specialist of all the American steam locomotives, but what I, what I at that time saw together with Andreas and everybody who was involved, like Gal Cousins for the American team, and we saw that plastic, better or not good, or whatever models, were already existing. So we decided to follow our just started range of high-end models, a little bit following the old historical high-end models from LGB. So I think you know that LGB had years ago, starting in the 70s, back in the 1970s, um, high-end locomotives, handmade. The first were made by a German little, mm, yeah, what is it, a very, very small company, all handmade. Then later on, uh, LGB started um, another series with Aster, mm -hmm. yeah, the metal models, different models. And after a while, they, they, they stopped that. They just added insolvency time that was gone. And in 2018, we came first time again with the high-end model with the snowplow. And um, then it was pretty fast kind of a thinking to say, OK, would it not be a, a real good idea to, to go with a high-value product, a high-end model um, of these locomotive or locomotives? Um, then we thought about bringing separate locomotives, so 119 and the Jupiter separately. But we also thought, hey, uh, that doesn't really make sense because they, they, they belong together yeah. anyway. Yeah, you, you can see them every day in Promontory. You can, uh, you can see them in TV, uh, in lots of video um, filmings uh, on YouTube or whatever. They are always together. So it doesn't make sense to sell an 119 to somebody and uh, Jupiter to another people or, or uh, person. So uh, we decided coming up with a set. Um, and we traveled to um, Promontory. We stepped into contact with the engineers, with the whole team there in Promontory, and, and we made researches. We, we were there with uh, lots of different color um, samples mm -hmm. to, to measure the colors on the right level. Um, we measured the locomotives. We got the, the, the drawings from the, um, from the people there. Um, so we started the, the 3D con construction, the 3D uh, design of these locomotives. And I, for myself, uh, started becoming a fan of these locomotives because from the German point of view, they're looking really, I'm sorry saying that, kitschy at the first time. Funny, uh -huh. because they're, they're, they're colorful and they're, they're not the typical German view. But with the time, I started becoming a real fan of these because if you see all these details on the real locomotives out there in Promontory and how many work there really is in these locomotives and how many, how many passion there is inside of these two engineers and of the whole team in Promontory, we, we started the whole design, we, we started making them and then they turned 
two, three rounds around my table getting approval of me, of Andreas, uh, about the details and so on. So we, we recreated that lots, lots of times, uh, looking for details. We, sh we made more than, um, more than a thousand pictures there. I, I shot a lot of photos f around the locomotives there in Promontory and then we compared the photos with the models. Last Last year, not this year, last year at Toy Fair, I got the first production samples and I was really unhappy about colors and everything. I saw that the whole bodies were right, the, the, the roughly construction was correct, the proportions were correct, but there were so many details missing. So I invested again two, three weeks in that models um, together with Andreas, going, going into that details, comparing that with the photos. And we tried to put as much as we could inside that locomotive. So it's two different things, they're, they are gorgeous. The first is just the details. Looking at the locomotives, you can compare that with pictures from Promontory, you, you can see 99% of the details. And the other thing is the function. So these are not locomotives just for display. You can run these locomotives as normal LGB trains and as a snowplow or all the other high-end locomotives you can from us. So. They have also the same Bülow motors like the normal LGB uh, locomotives has and they have a digital decoder inside which is DCC or MFX usable. Um, so you can use our controller, you can use all the other controllers with DCC. Yeah. Um, and then you have lights in front, you have lights in the cabin, um, you have for sure steam out of the uh, smokestack but you have also steam out of the cylinders which go uh, in the normal way of the rhythm of the locomotive um, and the funny thing is you have um, even steam out of the whistle. Yeah. Yeah, so if you push the whistle button on your digital controller and the whistle uh, turns on, you can hear the whistle, the steam comes out. So this is really, really funny. Yeah, I haven't seen uh, really very many, I can't recall any locomotives that have the, you know, the smoke coming out of the stack plus out of the pistons and the uh -huh. whistle when you blow the whistle. Mm -hmm. That had been a little bit of an engineering mm -hmm. challenge just mm -hmm. to get those generators in. And, and this is one of the biggest, the big advantages what we have uh, being connected to Merklin because um, as you probably know, we have also another um, big scale range in our program, which is the uh, uh, Merklin Gauge 1. And there we developed since 2013, 14, um, these smoke generator inside, which can all do all these functions. So. This is something where uh, LGB, uh, or from LGB, where we can use these technology in our locomotives then too, in the high-end locomotives for sure. Mm -hmm. This is something which is not related to our normal range because that costs a lot of money and this is really complicated and it's quite detailed. But locomotives are sturdy enough to run also outdoors. Even I would not run it outdoors because of all that details and you could maybe break some things or whatever. But break is, a, is another topic. Um, it's quite hard to break things because um, these locomotives are totally made of metal. So uh, the, the, the main parts, like the boiler or the engineer's cap or the frame and the, the, the body of the tender, this is all die cast. It's really, really heavy. You had it in your hands, you know what, it's, what the weight is. I was is. surprised at how heavy right. these, it's for it's being really, smaller really locomotives, heavy. they are very heavy. Right. Um, and, and all the other parts are all metal. Even the little, um, uh, what is it, the line which goes to the, bus, uh, to the bell? Yep. Yeah, this is this is metal, yeah, yeah. Um, and you have lots of brass things. You have, um, yeah, every little detail what you can see there. It's it's all metal. So yeah, this is not not a, not a typically plastic toy train. You know, this is collectible. Die cast, it's your die cast metals and then your uh, machine brass as well. Mm -hmm. um, really, really spectacular. They. So there are a lot of functions on these. I know that they they play the Star Spangled Banner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, they do too. Mm -hmm. They have announcements, uh, the whistle, the brakes, the sounds. Right, and, right. Um, and I think uh, what we're, what we're planning to do later on is to run uh, one of these, uh, we'll demonstrate it. Right. Uh, but it, they're designed to pull three or four cars, which was typical, Absolutely. typical at no that, problem that time. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, I, I would And they are powerful. Yeah, yeah, they are powerful. You can pull the train because they are so heavy. Uh, they do not even need a traction tire because they are really, really heavy to pull. Um, yeah, it's a certain train, a train with some cars in the front all. 
It's, uh, I think that people should actually get two sets at a time. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Go ahead and, and get yeah. one for display and another yeah. one that they you can know. run. But, but um, kidding aside, there was a lot of negative talk about these locomotives uh, on Facebook mm -hmm. that, you know, how can they expect somebody to pay, you know, at, at this point at time it was, you know, close to 10,000 US dollars. Mm -hmm. And it's, I th but the interesting thing is the people now that have gotten them and have posted back, they're like, oh my, worth every single penny um, you know, it's just one word, but you can, what you can say if you bought right. it, it's uh, post one word, yeah. happy. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. there's a... That's it, because uh, for sure it's a lot of money, um, it, it's handmade, it's another range, you know. And back at the time where uh, LGB came out with the Astra locomotives, mm -hmm. and this is, I think you can compare that. Um, you know, there were exactly the same discussion at that time. Yeah, um, you can talk today with people who are still thinking that LGB were a little bit crazy about announcing that locomotives. Um, some of these locomotives at that time, I remember just the, the Euro or at that time it was a Deutschmark price. Uh, it was 7,000 Deutschmarks, uh, what you have to pay for that. So that 7,000 at that time, transferring that to, to nowadays, you can say it's um, five to 6,000 euros today. So, and here we have two locomotives, yeah, it's it's two locomotives. We have an MSRP in Germany of um, 9,000 some euros and we have $10,000 in America because we want to keep it rare. It's a rare item, but if you compare that with that locomotive from a previous time, it's exactly that price range. You have two locomotives. Yeah. You you get two locomotives at the end. It's not a set of a locomotive and a dummy or whatever. So it's two full operating functional locomotives and this is, I think worth every penny, every penny you invest there. Um, in comparison to our, uh, this is where we came from, that, that high level uh, quality uh, range of products of, uh, with our snowplow. Yeah, the snowplow was a 4,500 euros retail MSRP. Okay. Yeah, and it was uh, also sold out within minutes because people just saw the, the worth of the product they were enthusiastic about the whole thing. And this is exactly the same thing here. Um, these locomotives are just, yeah, enthusiastic for, for people. Uh, you know, if, if you see that you can go around an hour and you can just explore different little details again and again and again. Um, this is so many, so many handcrafted work inside. It's just amazing, it's gorgeous. Well, like I said, these are, they're Less than 300 of these made worldwide. Right, we made 299 and uh, we sold approximately 100 pieces out of America. Mm. Yeah, so there's also, there were also a big request from people all over the world. So German collectors, collectors from Belgium, collectors from Netherlands. We, we even sold some to, to, to China, to uh, uh, Japan, uh, to England mm. and so on. Um, so yeah. And th this is not just for, I think this is not just for train enthusiasts to run a train, having an LGB or whatever train. This is also for people who are interested in mm, train history worldwide. And the Transcontinental Railroad in America is the railroad the event, the 150s, was a huge event last year. And um, this is history. This is something about a country, you know. And so, yeah, this is kind of a must for everybody who is really, really interested in, in technical things. It was the standard locomotive at this time, 1869. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I think this is the best replica of a, of a 440 you can, you can ever buy. So exactly, um, if you are a fan of American history or both a fan of American railroads, this is kind of a must having, having this locomotives because this is, this is the, the top line of right. making a 440. And I've noticed on, on these other high-end models and replicas that this is working, that they, um, being they're a limited edition, a lot of these tend to increase in value over the years once, right. once they're gone and, and people uh, are trying to collect these. Mm. Um, they become very hard to find and very valuable. I think so, I think so. We are 
a little bit available now, but um, that will turn in another direction. So if you see just the snowplow, uh, we were sold out pretty fast, and uh, nowadays people are looking for that. Yeah. Yeah, we just sold the last one in our store. <laughs> <laughs> to who? <laughs> to who? I don't know who. I wonder, I wonder no. who got the last one. <laughs> yeah, so that was the last one here in our store where we are already now. Um, but um, yeah, you, you, you can see that people are looking for that and uh, waiting one, two, three years. I think that will go up in the, in the price range and nobody will again discuss about the price they purchased it for. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it will be no discussion again. It's more about the whole value how the products are made and uh, yeah this yeah. is this is important well looking around here and some of the other gauge one stuff there it's also in that very it's right in yeah right. right we came we came out last year uh, also with our uh, french locomotive in gauge one which is a 241 series which is a huge locomotive which is uh, a totally different thing it's it's gauge one it's a different scale but anyway it's also four and a half thousand euros for a locomotive yeah. So, um, and, and there we, we also sold a lot of this. Um, there, you know, it's, it's, it's not a play train, it's not a, a, a toy trade. It's mm -hmm. something for collectors and uh, somebody who wants to run it sometimes. Yeah? We prepared it for running. We also prepared it like our standard rule is for Radius 1 in, in LGB, which is kind of funny. I wouldn't run it on that, but um, you know, if you have a layout and you, you had the, the must to, to integrate anywhere a Radius 1 piece, you can run it too. You have to remove the little fenders. Yeah, this is important uh, to know because uh, with the fenders it's technically not, not doable um, to run through a Radius th uh, 2. Um, but if you, if you want to run it in that condition, you can run it through Radius 3 uh, without any problem. Um, going smaller, then, then you need to remove the defenders. But it's, it's running, it's a, it's a running locomotive. But again, I think it's more collectible than somebody who runs it. Well, we have, I have a set at our office and we have it in our uh, conference room. And there's a window from the hallway that you can see into the conference room. And we have people that walk by stop. almost every day, stop, mm -hmm and then come in and see if they can look at it. Mm -hmm. um, and it is an absolute eye catcher. And these are people that aren't even interested in trains. They just That's they what go, I mentioned. Yeah. What is that? It's, that it's, is, it's about history. Know. It's about kind of art of trains, art of manufacturing these things. How many details can you put on that? Yeah, you, you can open the windows. You can slide the windows. You can open the little front doors on the cabin. You can open the little wooden, it's not wood here, but the, the prototypical wooden boxes, you, you have the pump on the back, you can remove the little pin of a Lincoln pin coupler, so you can really couple it like a Lincoln pin. It's not a model coupler like all the LGB couplers normally working with LGB trains. This is prototypical. Yeah? And even the little, what is it, the, the, the couplers in front on the, on the cow catcher, yeah, you can move up and you could uh, go a double heading with that locomotive to couple one to, to, to another one. Um, so it's, it's all detailed working. You can open up the, uh, the front of the boiler. Um, yeah, everything which, which could be possible is possible on that engine. And you know, the, some of the people I've talked to that have gotten them, they've, uh, well, uh, the gentleman that uh, won one in the auction, he sent us some pictures of it mm -hmm. on his mantle. Mm, yeah, uh, it's, it's and it's just gorgeous. It looks gorgeous. Great. And the other, mm -hmm. another person I know has a bar, and they put it in the center of their bar, and it's all you know. Uh, it is definitely a showstopper when you walk in and see it. So. Right. Uh, I know that this was, as we'd say, this was your baby kind of from the beginning, and uh, you should be really proud. This is uh, absolutely stunning, and uh, thank you for sharing these.